Peggy 18. I enjoy making the sounds for these things. I, I, maybe it's a, a bit of a macabre career choice, but there's always a new way to make somebody die. That sounds horrible, but it's true. Hunted is about the sense of being lost in the world. And not like literally lost, where you need a map, but just lost in the way that you get overcome and you really believe that you're there. The goal for me is to try and get the player to be excited about what's around the corner. You know, what's happening next? What can I find? What's going to make the hairs on the back of my neck tingle? You know, we talk about that a lot with the music. The vibe of the score is powerful. I mean, if you look at the, the main characters of the game, even the female, she's pretty, you know, with it, pretty brutish looking, very strong, powerful. So I wanted to convey that in the music. So there's a lot of choir, a lot of brass, and a lot of percussion. And as far as modern elements go, I've created a decent amount of sounds for the score to help convey um, an uneasiness in the world and in the levels that they uh, traverse through in the game. I'm never gonna say no to that. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of weaponry, a lot of spell casting, and a lot of hyper crazy kind of sound, but in general, the overall approach is very ambient and kind of creepy, maybe a little bit of horror in, in places. I mean, I'm a big fan of bowing anything, like a, a cello bow, whether it be a, a metal tin, uh, a gate, you know, a, a pot from the kitchen, and you pitch them real low down and you put some reverb and delay on it, and it creates a, a decent tension for the game. Every sound in the game is designed. There's there's nothing like a stock library sound in this game. So every single sound, even like the, the small impacts of the of the wood breaking as a body falls into it, it's, you know, a multi-layered sound of like crunchy stuff up top and then this stuff up here. These things make really great whooshes for like the arrows, you know, as they pass by your head. That's how you make them. Cutting it close there. Ooh, a good death rattle. I'll take chocolate syrup and tomato paste and corn syrup and I'll mix it all together and just like stick a mic in there and just, you know, make some really cool beefy sounds. And then when that stuff like splatters and you hear it after you kill, it's really satisfying. You wanna hear, you wanna imagine the blood splattering on the ground. If you're into that sort of thing. Because I don't think about that. I never think about that. A lot of the nostalgia of the old dungeon crawly games was all about the magic mouth giving you the riddle or you find the runes written on the wall and you translate them into some mysterious riddle. What we want to do is give that same kind of fun like, ah, I figured it out, or I've been thinking about it all night and I woke up in the morning with the answer. We wanted the puzzles of our game to blend into the mythology and blend into the environments and be true to where they are. You know, you may break through a wall and find out there's there's a huge other area behind it that you didn't know existed, and those are all over our world. The sense of discovery and all of the emotions that walking down those dark corridors invoke is really, to me, sort of the essence of the foundation of what these games are built on. Because your responsibility is to give people what they're looking for, but once you've done that, then you gotta give them some things they didn't expect. 